Thank you Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. What is a stretch gauge? How is it used? And when should it be used? I'm going to answer all those questions in this video because I'm going to be replacing the rod bearings in my E46 M3. So let's go. You ever have one of those days where everything is just going super smooth and then it isn't? Well, that's what's happening here. Dude, check this out. What the fuck? Yeah. They sent me the wrong ones? Well, that's not gonna work. Definitely a huge difference between these two bolts. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Look at the package. Make sure that's for the right engine. Because yeah, I know you're... E46 M3 tested. All right, I see what the problem is. I want to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. They are a home monitoring and alarm system. I'll tell you, I installed my own monitoring system probably a year ago, and I had to rent a sky lift. I had a ladder. I was crawling around the attic. I had boxes of wires that I was running all over the shop. I had a friend help me. Literally, it took an entire weekend. Simply Safe, it's all wireless. It was super easy to install. The instructions are easy. Less than an hour, and I'm not exaggerating, less than an hour, and I had the whole system set up. It's all done on my phone. It's very simple, very easy. I was blown away. They have tons of sensors. So obviously, you know, you guys have home monitoring systems or you have alarm systems, you know that you have motion sensors. The motion sensors obviously detect motion. So if the alarm system is set and you've got motion happening inside your house, you'll get uh, an alert that says that you have motion inside your house. They also have entry sensors. So if somebody opens a window or a door, in my case, a garage door, and they're not supposed to, you'll also get an alert for that. Those are the really like common standard features. This system has sensors like a glass breaking sensor. The sound of glass breaking will then trigger the alarm system. Like how genius is that? Then they give you a water sensor. So a water sensor normally would be used near a water source where a potential leak could happen. Let's say near a dishwasher or a utility sink or your washer and dryer. I have it near my pressure washer inside the building because if that thing leaks, I really need to know about it. And then they give you a temperature sensor or sometimes they call it a freeze sensor. The purpose of the temperature sensor is to alert you if it's too hot or if it's too cold inside your home or in my case, the shop. We're in Florida, I don't have to worry about things getting too cold, but I do have an air conditioned shop and we're closed on the weekends. So to conserve energy, I like to have the air conditioning shut off on the weekends so I can always monitor that with the temperature sensor. Another cool thing is we have a panic button and that can be completely customizable. So you press it and it sounds the alarm. You can press it and it'll silently set the alarm and send the police. It'll send fire or medical, whatever you need. It's really pretty cool. And in addition to that, they have this really cool key fob. So what I can do from here is it allows me to activate or deactivate the alarm with the push of a button. It is so cool. Listen, I know what you guys are thinking. Well, how much is it? Okay, this is the best part. It is less than $1 a day. That's it. And, and, <laughs> You can try it risk-free for 60 days. So you have, what, two months to try it out. If you don't like it, send it back. It doesn't cost you anything. Like, it won't cost you anything. So why wouldn't you try it? I'm gonna be very real with you guys. I get companies that wanna sponsor me all the time, and I only partner with those that I actually truly believe in because my word means everything. 
So I'm not gonna just sell out to somebody. I truly do believe in Simply Safe. If you come to my shop, you're gonna see their system installed. This system is truly amazing. And because I've partnered with them, after you click the link below and you sign up for their interactive monitoring, they're gonna give you 20% off, plus your first month for free. So thank you, Simply Safe, for sponsoring this video. All right, I see what the problem is. So obviously the bolt is too big and won't fit in there. Early M3s had 11 millimeter bolt. That's what we have. Well, it's an 05, so that takes a 10 millimeter bolt. Can you get the right ones? Uh, let me check. Yeah, so the part number we have is 201-6103. I need a 201-6102. <laughs> Two months. It's two months out. Um, factory bolts, I guess. I mean, at this point, I don't know any other options. So we're going to have to go factory. I mean, the factory worked this long, right? Yeah. So uh, I'll call the dealer in the morning and we'll see if they've got them in stock. If not, I'm sure I can get them in a couple of days. I mean, more than, you know, a lot faster than two months. Oh what kind of sucks is this whole video is about how to use the stretch gauge and I guess you know we'll just do a, like I'll still show how to use the stretch gauge okay. without installing the bolts I mean I'll keep them in stock I'm sure we'll use them for another car we might be able to measure the difference between old bolts and brand new ones yeah uh, factory bolts yeah like torque to yield factory to factory, yeah. oh yeah so we'll take the torque to yield bolts out Show them a brand new one. And then Might be able to measure the difference with that gauge anyway. All right, we can probably do that. Yeah, let's do that. In the meantime, let's wrap it up for tonight. And there's nothing else we can do tonight. So let's go home. All right. All right, you guys just saw Joey and I talking and I had ordered the wrong bolts. These are way too thick. They're not going to work. I can't get the correct one. So instead I had to order the factory bolts. That's okay, I'm still gonna do my best to show you how to use a stretch gauge. Before we talk about how to use a stretch gauge, it's first important to know the difference between a torque to yield bolt, the factory bolt, and the ARP bolt. When you think about bolts, not just torque to yield bolts, but all bolts, when you tighten them down, they actually elongate. So if you imagine like a spring, you tighten it down and the bolt gets long. You loosen that bolt and you take it out, it shortens up again. So that's what's happening. Obviously I'm exaggerating quite a bit here, but on a torque to yield bolt, these are designed to stretch. And they stretch quite a bit. So these have a three stage torquing sequence. From BMW, tighten it down to five Newton meter. I'm gonna use this as a demonstration. This is not from the M3. This is from a different vehicle. It's simply just for demonstration purposes. So you would tighten these bolts down to five Newton meters, and then you're gonna tighten it again to 30 Newton meters, and then you're gonna go 105 degrees, right? Then you back it off and you do it again. And then you back it off and you do it one more time. There's three stages of doing that. And the reason they do that is because that is how you achieve the maximum tensile strength from the torque to yield bolts. A lot of times you'll hear me call them stretch bolts, torque to yield bolts, same, same thing. The ARP bolts are not torque to yield bolts. They do not stretch like they do, so they don't require the multiple stages of torquing. Instead, they give you one torque sequence and they want you to measure the stretch. They have an optimal stretch that they want you to achieve to give you the maximum clamping force. And in this case, it's seven and a half thousandths to eight thousandths. Now, if you wanna think about how much that actually is, a human hair is about two and a half thousandths. Essentially, they want it to stretch about the same thickness of three human hairs. Unless you're my Aunt Sally, then that's about one human hair. I don't know what ARP uses in their bolts. It is a super unobtainium type of metal and it is harder than woodpecker lips. This stuff is amazing. This is why people go with the uh, high performance bolts is because of the upgraded metals that they use and, and how much better this is than, than the uh, factory bolts. Okay, now that we've talked about the differences in bolts, we're gonna show you how to use the stretch gauge. Now that you know that we're using the stretch gauge for just the performance bolts, but not the factory bolts. In fact, if you look at the two bolts the differences the factory bolt does have a little divot here but this one has an intentional divot right there you flip them over and again an intentional divot this one is more of a domed edge the reason these divots are here are specifically for this gauge once you've done your tightening for my car in the application it is 50 foot pounds you'll tighten it to 50 foot pounds and then you're going to measure it with the gauge so imagine the piston 
in the cars up here. You have the cylinder. Obviously, you can't get this gauge up in there, so that's why this is really long. You're going to sneak this past. You're going to get this in here like that. And then the pin up here is going to go right into that divot of that bolt. So basically, it's going right into this pin right here. So now that it's centered right in the middle of that bolt, we can see, we're going to kind of center it up here like that. Okay, we're going to get our gauge centered. We're going to turn this until we get to zero. Now I've already used these little marks. This is how much we want the bolt to stretch. So we would torque this down to 50 Newton meters and then we would measure it again. If we measure it again and the gauge, let's say instead of this being up here where we need it to be, I'm sorry, this is really hard to do. Instead of being ah, there or so, let's say it's right here. It's not quite there, so we would have to torque it down a little bit more until we achieve the maximum stretch. This is not used on all bolts all the time. In fact, they're only used on performance bolts, and a lot of times when you buy these fasteners, they will tell you that they need to be checked with a, a stretch gauge. It's not on all bolts, definitely not on factory bolts. So the reason they go with the stretch instead of a torque sequence, because if you tighten every bolt to 50 foot-pounds, let's say, it's not gonna have the same clamping load. It's not gonna be even. If you go and check them, they're all gonna be different. So that's why they want you to check the stretch of the bolt because that's gonna give you the maximum tensile strength just like the torque to yield bolts. I'll tell you guys, there's a huge black wormhole of information out there that you can get into. Thermal expansion and certain different types of metals and lubricants and oh my gosh, it goes on and on and on. I am not that guy. I'm not the science professor that's gonna to talk to you about that stuff. I'm just a guy touching on the subject. In fact, I'm still learning about some of this stuff. It is insane how much information is out there. Okay, what we want to do is I wanted, I was very curious as Joey and I were, were discussing it, he had a really good idea to measure the actual torque to yield bolt. So this one is one we took out of my car and this is a brand new one. How much did this stretch compare to this one? Now keep in mind, when this is tightened, it'll actually be stretched more. So this is un loaded stretch. So we'll see how much it's stretched just sitting like this compared to a brand new one that has not been installed yet. Okay, so it doesn't have the little divots, so we're gonna do our best to um, center the bolt here. Let's go ahead and zero our gauge. Okay, it's about where we need to be. So now let's take this back out. This is the brand new one. And this is the one we took out of the car. <laughs> we are 25 thousandths difference from the original one. That is a huge number. Consider that the gauge goes from here to here with the ARP bolts, right? You just wanna go from here to here. The factory ones, and remember, this is not even installed. This is just out here. When it's installed, it's stretched more, but just sitting here, not installed, it goes from here all the way to here at 25, it looks like, oh, maybe not quite 25, 22, 23, thousandths of a difference. That is huge when it comes to bolt stretch. All right, enough talking about bolts. Let's get back to the car. Although the bearings clearly needed to be replaced, they actually don't look too bad. I was kind of surprised with 130,000 miles. I thought they might be a little worse than this. I think they're the original bearings. All the evidence shows that this has never been done before. We're going back together with new factory bolts. If you guys want a more in-depth video of rod bearings, check out my E93 rod bearing video. In the comments of that video, someone made a nice suggestion. They suggested using a zip tie to hold the oil pan gasket in place so we're not fumbling around with it during install. Great idea. Out of all the oil pan bolts, three of them are five millimeters longer. So if you don't pay attention, you can actually screw that up. So if you see the thickness of the oil pan right here is thicker than it is here and here. Very important not to screw that up. The plan with this car is to get it mechanically sound. Then I'll be doing a bunch of hot guy stuff like the suspension. For instance, check out this sway bar. It is the most disgusting sway bar ever. I don't have a new one yet, so it's gonna go back in today but I promise you it's gonna be replaced with a much better sway bar, including full adjustable suspension. I'm gonna do big brake upgrade kit. 
We're gonna do a bunch of really cool stuff. I can't wait to get started on that. I can't wait to show you guys. It's gonna be really cool. So make sure you guys subscribe and stick around for some really cool projects coming up on this car. In the last M3 rod bearing video, I had some questions like this one from Jacob that said, why would you need to replace the bearings after only 70,000 miles? He's owned several BMWs with lots of miles and never needed to do that. Well, honestly, it's only for three engines. The S54, which you find in the E46 M3, the S65, which you find in the E9 X M3, the S85 in the E60 M5, and the E63 M6. So only just those three engines, which are very high revving, performance engines. These are race engines, so they do require some more maintenance. Now, if it's a full race car application and you're driving it, racing it all the time, then you would want to replace the bearings maybe every 40,000 miles. Otherwise, every 60 to 70,000 miles, you want to replace the bearings. Thomas Jerry brought up a good point. He wanted to know why I didn't measure the torque bolts. Like, did I skip that part? Well, the answer is no. In the S65 and the S85 engines, they have connecting rods that have blind holes, meaning it doesn't have an exit. Therefore, I can't physically measure the bolt. And the rod bolts are measured under a load. So it's not like I can remove the bolt and measure it either. Because of that, ARP suggests to torque the bolts to 60 foot pounds. You know, I really enjoy reading your guys' comments. They really keep me motivated to just keep making more videos like this. So I just want to say thank you. Well, the engine sounds good. I got more stuff coming up soon. Thanks for watching.